Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello, and uh, welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today we're here with Phil and Colm Lane has come all the way from New York and via Copenhagen. Exactly. I had a long weekend, just got back this morning from Copenhagen. Uh, go to the game tomorrow night uh, and then back to New York on Wednesday. Okay, so rest for the week. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah. it's worth doing it for a playoff game. Well, absolutely. This is a preview show, anyway, for uh, Ireland versus Denmark, uh, the second leg. Uh, Colm, how was the trip to Copenhagen? And uh, I believe you have a funny story. Well, it was Copy an Steve. interesting weekend in Copenhagen. I think obviously the tickets were an issue and a lot of people were left without tickets. And I was one of the ones who didn't get a, an FAI allocation ticket, but we managed to get hold of a couple of tickets in the Danish end. But obviously there was a lot of speculation last week about would people be allowed into the ground if they were wearing Irish colours and stuff like that. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about people going to get questioned and stuff like that too. And I heard a few people were turned back and a few people were turned away. We kept the colours hidden and zipped up the jackets on the way in and it was fine. But once we went inside, we showed the jerseys and everything else. And the Danes were a bit funny about it. Some of them were fine, very friendly. Others were a bit arrogant and looking at us like, what were we doing in their patch and all that kind of stuff. But they really thought they were going to win two or three now. And it was... Uh, and they, they were saying that to you, right? Yeah, all day walking around was like, we're going to beat you two nil tonight, we're going to beat you three nil. And I think they were shocked by the results in many ways. And it actually turned a little bit aggressive at the end where people were saying, uh, that shouldn't have happened, you guys didn't play football, all that kind of stuff. But I suppose Ireland did exactly what we expected them to do. Try and keep, yeah, keep yeah. the ties, get it to a second game. And it was... I think they were a bit in shock after it all. They really didn't know what to expect. And it'll be interesting to see how it goes tomorrow night. And speaking of shock, I believe yeah, your wife was the one who actually got in touch with us to get you yeah, on. Yeah, I was out after the game on <laughs> Saturday night. And then I started getting a text message saying, would I be willing to come on the show tonight? Uh, so when I arrived back from Copenhagen this morning... This was first thing on my agenda. I can't disobey the wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you also you, you were telling me um, off air there that you, you, you've been to most of the playoffs now, going back as far as 95, was it? Yeah, I've been going to Man's Den since I was about six. So I saw Johnny Giles play, uh, Don Givens and all these guys at the end of the 70s. But I was in Anfield in 95. I saw their kind of playoff games for... Yeah. The two thousand and two World Cup, obviously, but even before that, going back to the the um, we had the playoff against Turkey. It was yeah, it the home Belgium, was that? the Belgium one? Yeah, it was in, in Brussels that night. I suppose the difference this time is it's the first time in a home leg, is as the second leg, where we really need to win. Obviously, we had an away goal against Bosnia the last time, so a draw was enough for us. Um, and previous to that, we never had the home leg at, at home really. I think other than the Estonia game yeah. where we had a four 0 lead, so. Tomorrow's kind of a unique game, I think, in that respect, that it's yeah, a very different... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, we have to win, and, and we haven't really been in that position before. Yeah, it's a different affair when we have to bring the game to them, because obviously they kind of have they kind of have a little bit of a security blanket if they get an away goal, panic panic station starts yeah. to go off, you know. Can it, um, obviously, you've been going to the playoff game so long, and obviously yeah. me and Paul are a bit younger than you, yes. um, but... How would you say the quality of football has changed from back then to now? Would you say it's declined? I would have seen a lot of better players. Yeah, you well, obviously, better, yeah, better yeah. quality of players, yeah. Better but. players, and we probably had more players at the top end of the Premier League, yeah. going back to 95, but like Jack Charlton's style was very similar to what we saw on yeah. Saturday. It's a very direct approach, very cautious, defensive approach. So the quality wasn't great, even though we had great players in those days. Mm. I think under McCarthy and... Well, Trapattoni was quite defensive too, but under McCarthy we played in that nicer football, but we weren't always lucky either, so we had the defeat in Belgium, and, and obviously we got through against Iran uh, for the World Cup, but definitely a different quality of player, but I think that's not necessarily mm. reflective of how, certainly the, the effort doesn't tr change, we're still always going to try really hard. It's no always, yeah, it's always a squad. For yeah, the like, okay. And O'Neill and Keane do get the best out of the, the group of players they have, and there, there'll be no shortage of effort and no shortage of application tomorrow it's just whether they get the break and get a chance to get a goal yeah we were getting the best out of on Twitter last month actually yes. <laughs> <laughs> we did check it out on our Twitter exactly but, but um, the band is as good as the performance tomorrow yeah well, absolutely well they all seem like they're in great form yeah. they? they're all slagging yeah. the shit out of each other all, that's yeah. a great thing about them they're all friends they all seem like mates like they'd all yeah, kind of think... go for a point after and stuff and <laughs> they, they will kind of they will play for each other <laughs> but I think you do see other teams where 
they don't have each other's backs if things go wrong. <coughs> yeah, and they start well, to the England, see, England, England up forever. Yeah, the, it's a it's a team of individuals Dutch, exactly, and the Dutch have fallen apart over the years. Our squads will rarely do anything like that, and you'll never see the heads go down. Yeah, and even if we're a goal down with five minutes to go, they'll be trying even harder than ever to get back. Yeah, and I think the Danes might actually suffer a bit more from that kind of their spirit might be broken if they haven't scored with, in the first seventy minutes tomorrow, and that's where kind of we might come into our own in that last twenty minutes. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, as far as like tomorrow, how do you kind of see uh, see us lining up? Like, obviously, I'd say we'd all agree probably on the back five with the keeper. Yeah. Um, with uh, Randolph, um, Christie, Clark, Duffy, and Ward. You could see them coming out a bit like the Moldova game because they pressed and they ran the channels, which is why I think. Like obviously we'll get into team talk and stuff we'll chain long to stretch their full backs because your man Larson thought he was a centre forward in the first first leg yeah. so any t- if we do come out with a high energy if it's a case where we score early I, I'd be more fearful in that scenario because we do have a tendency to sit back and if we sit back obviously Denmark they play the ball well but they're a long ball team they can use the long ball well I think it kind of might be a nervy affair but yeah. I'm, qu- I'm quite confident. Okay, but how would you see us line up in midfield? Or how would you look? How would you look us? Yeah. Up? Well, I think you're right about the back five. They've had two clean sheets in a row now between Denmark and Wales away, yeah. so you wouldn't touch that at the moment. And obviously, obviously, Clark was captain. And Duffy's playing out of skin. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, obviously, Myler was suspended on on Saturday night, and you would expect that he'll come back in probably in place of Callum O'Dowda. And then, do you make any more changes? And obviously, O'Neill is a cautious manager he can often surprise us by being cautious even in the home games but you might see maybe he'll make another change up front to say put in Long instead of uh, Darren Murphy but in midfield Harry Arter is the one where while he's done well for us maybe it's again the wishful thinking would be maybe he'd put Houlihan in or something like that but it's probably not really the base case or what you'd expect him to do so I think maybe the only change would be Myler in for Callum O'Dowda and then the strikers does Daryl yeah. Murphy get the first half or d- does he yeah. mix it up and put Shane on's pace in there because pace is really what might yeah. give us a chance tomorrow well, come, on, we'll come on to that and say how do you think in midfield in know? midfield I definitely do see Moira coming in and kind of doing yeah, a similar it's... role to how he was against Moldova um, well right now he's our captain isn't he yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Robbie Brady to move out to the right see so if he gets more of the ball there it can only be good he'd be more inclined to kind of link up with Sawyer's Christie a bit better. Uh, I think Sawyer's Christie gets a coffee into him, start the match, you know, he might he might kind of be a bit more effective with his running, but... Um, well, he actually had our best chance the other night. He did, he yeah, that a good run, 10 but, minutes, yeah. But I, I'm not sure, I, I guess I, we'll get on to approach in a minute in terms of what type of style we'll play, Yeah. but definitely I think, we don't see a lot of changes in midfield, I think, I'd say maybe... Yeah. More, I, I, more I, I, don't think he, I don't think he'll go with Hulham, I think... I think he'll stay with Detroit and Trusted for the, um, well actually it was the Serbia game, wasn't it, when he brought the three, the three of them in, Myler, Arthur and Henry. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah, it was Serbia when we lost. When I think, the, Harry, I think Harry Arthur has to play after the way he kind of marshaled Ericsson. Yeah, like he, yeah. He, if you're going to do the same job on him yeah. just to stop him yeah. playing. They're, they're going to look to cut I think Myler would be the one now marshaling Ericsson, not, not Arthur. I think it actually put, it push, pushes the lads further forward mm. in, in a sense to get bodies in the box like, we, like we've seen for the Welsh goal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Although we didn't get forward that often, but I'd like to see Hendrick in a more advanced role this game um, because he he does make a difference when he gets on the ball for us yeah. and the thing about him is he's actually not afraid when he does take on players he does create a lot of havoc for, for yeah. against other teams you know. and obviously Robbie Brady had a lot of set pieces the other night just free kicks from a long way out but it was all launched towards Duffy and Clark and like it was very one dimensional and yeah. we didn't really get a break of the ball or anything like that and you're kind of hoping we do get a break of the ball but then they do need the other players pushing up behind I think them. Um, the atmosphere might kind of cause a bit of that. You, you'd have to feel like the, the Danes will start to feel the pressure the more the minutes go by yeah. and it stays in nil all. And then if we do, kind of, if we are launching balls into the box, you, you have a feeling they will drop to someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, we get, we're going to get into the kind of more advanced position. So you'll see that it's a no brainer. McLean on the left. Yeah, Brady on the right. I think most yeah. people will agree. Yeah. Um, if not, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, up front, I think the three of us are going with Shane Long. 
Are we? He well, obviously he's, a, he's he's down in the dumps at the moment, but he does have pace and strength, and he will stretch that back four. And they do look vulnerable when they do press forward, and um, full back positions especially. So um, Shane Long is an all-rounder for me. And what about you, Paul? I think that's what I'd like to see. I'm not sure Martin O'Neill will do that. I think yeah, he likes Daryl Murphy because of his ability to hold the ball up, but he's not going to run the channels for you. He's not gonna, not got the same pace as Shane Long yeah. has. And if you go back to the Germany game three years ago now nearly, that was purely a goal on Shane Long's pace. And Murphy doesn't have that. So yeah. if we need to get a goal tomorrow night, we're more likely to get it with the pace of Shane Long than just the kind of one-dimensional knocking it off to Darren Murphy. Unless we play a second striker off Darren Murphy. Yeah, but we but don't, don't, we see, don't have anybody available. I wouldn't see moment. that happening until at least yeah. the second half. And yeah, as you exactly. were saying about Hooligan, I think it might be a case for, for the last, if it's 60 minutes, it's still nil nil. I did, I think he, we could see him bring it on if he doesn't start with, with Murphy or sorry if he doesn't start with Long yeah. we definitely see the two of them coming off the bench absolutely um, yeah. or even he, he gave Hoover a, a, a game there the other night so it'd be nice to see him there um, so yeah it'd be interesting to see kind of how, how we uh, how we do line up O'Neill as we all know loves a surprise in the line up yeah. like no one was, I don't think anyone was really expecting no doubt you know, I think a lot of people were expecting Glenn Whelan then again you never know you could, you could start off having like Moiler and Whelan or something like that just to, to be defensive you never know he, man, does, he does like a wild card all right. yeah I think like the analogy in terms of the approach could be the Italy game in Lille last year where we knew we needed to win but they actually were very tight and very compact for the first 45 minutes and it was really in that last half an hour when i say Hulan came on started creating things Robbie Brady started getting into the box and we, and we scored the goal at the end that could be the model of what we go for tomorrow night so it could be a very conservative kind of cautious approach which is exactly what the Danes don't want I think the Danes are assuming tomorrow that we'll go out and press forward and yeah. it'll give them more space but I think O'Neill will actually restrict them and try and not, not give them too much space until later in the game maybe the second half and allow us to go for it yeah I think I think I think the approach would be very similar to the Welsh game yeah I think it'll be exactly the same approach whether in personnel there's a bit of change I wouldn't I don't know but I don't see him giving any young, any younger lads even though they would um, in this second leg unless it's off the bench yeah, he, start, he, yeah. he will he will go with what he trusts really. exactly yeah um, it's not and again it's not the type of game to be bringing these lads as much as we want to see these lads being brought in it's not the type of game right yeah, now yeah but in saying that as well you wouldn't have thought I doubt it would have come in because of that the other night but he must be doing something right and he's scoring yeah. goals for, for yeah. Bristol at the moment as well yeah. so you know um, props to him you know now obviously it's our biggest it's our biggest game since since probably the Italy game now yeah. Arguably, well, uh, you would you would class the Welsh game in there as well, yeah. but this is the big one that we need our big players now to step up to the fold. Uh, the big players, you, you, hey, uh, you think like springing to mind the first one you think of is McLean, probably second lately is Duffy. Yeah. So I know now we were saying this beforehand about McAteer being the one. And he wasn't even meant to start that day. Yeah, I think a lot of the times the big players who emerge in these games or who get the goals aren't necessarily the ones you expect. So while you would like, you say, a Robbie Brady or a Hendrick or a Duffy to score the goal here, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a, a kind of a surprise goal scorer. And Martin O'Neill loves Aidan McGeady. And we know, it, like, in the last 20 minutes, if you throw somebody on, yeah. it could be somebody like McGeady who pulls yeah. a goal out of nowhere, even though he's done nothing for us for two years. Yeah. So it's it's very hard to predict who will be the match winner you'd love to see Shane Long get his confidence back or even if it goes in off his arse yeah. it's it's be be just just I think everybody would say yes it would exactly. it'd be written in the stars for him to just end the slump uh, with, with the yeah. most probably one of the most important goals of all time exactly. and he's done it before so. yeah. a similar goal to the goal he scored against Poland would be we'd, we'd take that all day long exactly yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> qualify, yeah. we don't care how it goes in tomorrow as long as it goes in but I say the big players don't have a big role to play so Hendrick has had good games and bad games in this campaign you, you need them to have a good night tomorrow mm -hmm. across the board whether it be Ward Christie like the full backs I think our attacking usually comes between the full backs and the wingers overlapping with each other Yeah. and we didn't see oh, a lot of Ward and Christie doing that the other night but I think tomorrow we'll have to see more of that at least supporting McLean and Brady in terms of how they get the ball and how they move around them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, there's just one thing kind of that we've been toying with in my mind, just if they do go with Hulahan, 
and obviously we have our wingers and Hewlett if they're if they're targeting the full yeah. backs to hit them with the energy we have with the pace we have with McLean um, surely Hewlett would be the man kind of to pick them out find, find the pockets of space for them yeah but I think as, as Colin was saying with being, 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 you have to be and people would argue that we should be going at them from the start, but the fact that if they do score, it's essentially two goals they've scored. Even if it's yeah, 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 no, that's true. So that's true. Yeah. You, as and as, and as you were saying, the longer it goes on, the pressure will be more on them. So the longer we can keep it tight and not concede, I think that's when we like if we're approaching sixty minutes, it's nil nil. I think you, you'll see them going for, and that's when we. When we have to get a goal and when we have to play well, I think that's when we're, when we are at our best. Yeah. Well, obviously, obviously, we did set up to frustrate. Put it another way, park, kind of park the bus. Yeah. Um, well, we set up to frustrate, frustrate them, obviously, to yeah. cut Christian Eriksen off. But we can't afford to do that in Dublin because we did work. We did ride our luck an awful lot, and there was yeah. some chances that the Danes should have put away um, obviously the double save was fantastic and this is sorry the Cisco chance was it? Cisco yeah. Cisco sorry yeah but but um, I think yeah, I, yeah. Was, yeah. I think we, yeah. have to, we have to retain the ball better because we, we were given the yeah, ball that, away that, that was one thing it. we couldn't do yeah. Yeah. I don't think we would necessarily be playing expansive gung ho football but definitely retaining the ball better staying compact and not giving them chances and then I think I think O'Neill would be very happy if it's nil all after 60 minutes I think, he, I think he's counting yeah. on the last half an hour and as you said the last 10 minutes when we need a goal is usually when the crowd gets behind the team the team's heads go up and McLean starts running past people for yeah. fun at that stage yeah. the yeah. only the only problem I'd have is if we don't score and it goes to extra time their away goal still counts in extra time well yeah well no I think if if they like it, it doesn't go to extra time I think so if it's one all after no if it's minutes, one all if it's no, one no, all if it stays nil nil and then it's the first half of oh, if they score an extra time, time. that's no oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, we would need two in extra time, which is kind of that's a big ask when you've only got 15 20 minutes. So we, so we do need to score in that half an hour if, it, if, if it's yeah. going to be nil nil, you know. God, um, it will be a tense affair if it goes to extra oh, time, but oh. yeah. But and I don't think penalties, <laughs> well, that's <laughs> a penalty shootout. Imagine a penalty shootout when we won on a penalty shootout, yeah. You it couldn't would be, that, um, like. it'd be an amazing night, but as O'Neill said earlier today, if there's a goal. That means there's no extra time, there's no penalties yeah. in, in normal time. So, but I'm not writing out writing off a nil all draw again because I think the way we the way the game went on Saturday, you could see another nil all draw do, potentially. Do you, but yeah, do you think there was kind of a, a fraction of fear in the way we played, kind of because we had so many yellow cards? No, I think there was a game plan. Yeah, I think they were sticking to that game plan. But I did see what you're, what you're saying, mm. and I was impressed. But I don't think there was oh, any I was yellow impressed cards by the all. discipline, especially with McLean. Like McLean I think, loves to go in hard. Yeah, McLean. And, I think you'll see him get booked. <laughs> <laughs> McLean and Arthur were both had moments the other night where they could have got booked. But yeah, the referee definitely. was pretty lenient, to be fair. Yeah. But at least tomorrow, they gave like, a lot. Though. Even if somebody got sent off tomorrow, they're not going to count it for the World Cup. So it'd be a it's a like, one-off game in, in that respect. It'd be a bit like when... they get sent off an extra time. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be a bit like when United bet Juventus and Roy Keane took one for the team and had to yeah. sit out the final. I think um, if it's... If that happens, If it's done happens. in that way where like that night Keane had to do what he did... Yeah. McLean is the one who's more likely just to do something stupid because he's <laughs> he's so hyped up before yeah, the game. So it's like when he when he shoulder bars that Welsh player when we were. Yeah, he just yeah, needs to, like if he stays controlled, he'll be fine. I'm sure somebody else will get booked because it's that type of night, like the Wales game at home, where it'll be a very passionate game. There'll be a lot of tackles going in, and it's just keeping your keeping your cool, not getting involved. Uh, Harry Arter's had a couple of the last few games with the little headbutt incidents that he had last month as well or two months ago. So. I think they'll O'Neill is very good at channeling them, keeping them focused on what they need to do. And I think that shouldn't be an issue and I don't I'm not concerned about yellow cards or anything at this point in time. It's more about the approach and making sure that they're disciplined. Yeah. It's kinda it, it yeah, it is. It's if you think of it, kinda it's one more game, one do or die game to get there. So how much nobody's gonna be scared of yellow cards or silly fouls. How much of it in tribute would it be? For James McLean to get the goal to send us to the World Cup, I think that would be uh, icing on the cake. Yeah, yeah. Would go off he's in been the, the stadium. <laughs> he's been our player of the qualifying campaign and the goal away in Austria, uh, the, the goal in Wales, and uh, the two in Moldova. Um, 
it'll be great. He's had a rough couple of weeks in England as well, and obviously gets this time of year he's always going to get booed in the Premier League. But it's actually was to the point now, though. <laughs> yeah, but I think he'd he'd enjoy it all the more oh, if, if he was the, yeah. the one who put us in the World Cup. I thought it was brilliant the way he, he walked straight into Tony. You know, this big grin on his face. He's like, "Hey, Tony," <laughs> <laughs> and he hasn't been picked since. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to go to Celtic. <laughs> exactly. I think he'll go there. But um, predictions anyway. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'll let you go first, and then I'll give him one. Oh, yeah, we we'll go this way. I suppose you kind of you kind of said I think it's going to be it's going to be a tense and be a fair like the Wales game and I think we're going to nick it in the seventy minute. Goal score. James McLean. I'm going to go for two one because I think it'll be hard to keep Den- Denmark scoreless for two games. Yeah. But I think we might we're capable of getting the two, and uh, I'd love to see Shane Long get the winner. Okay. Anyone else or are you just going? Yes. Again, I think Duffy. McLean, <laughs> McLean, Duffy in a corner. First goal scorer. We'll yeah, see he, he, exactly. He'll be up there for every free kick in every corner, so he's got every chance of scoring a goal as well. Yeah, I'm going to go 1-0. I just can't see us scoring two. Yeah. And I would love it for us to score two because I think it could go 2-1. Um, but I'm going to say 1-0 and I am going to go for a Shane Duffy goal. Bull header. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from, uh, from say a corner or a Robbie Brady uh, set piece. Oh, he, he wouldn't be a bad show from if we set pitch yeah. uh, outside the box. But, um, if we don't get through, it'll be very long flight back to New York on Wednesday for me. But <laughs> I'll be back in New York on Wednesday. <laughs> but if it, if we do get through, it'll be easy. I'll be delighted. <laughs> Will you go out in the town on Tuesday for you? Uh, not two days. We've got an early flight back to New York. But I'll see you in Moscow. <laughs> 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 well, uh, let us know your thoughts on uh, the predictions and uh, how you think we'll line up against. Um, the day's tomorrow. Also, if you guys can please uh, subscribe or aim for that 1,000 subscribers before Christmas, Mark. Um, we're just over 710 now at the moment, so uh, don't forget to click it. And Climbing if you want to get in, in on the show or your wife wants to voluntarily get you in on the show, like exactly. Column, uh, get in touch with us and uh, we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.